My husband's truck was broken into. The thieves stole the faceplate for his radio that's almost 10 years old and completely worthless, but ignored the $2,000 worth of subs and amps. What's the dumbest act of theft that's occurred to you? When I was younger, someone stole our car with a ton of ski equipment in it. We found the car a week later in a ditch. They didn't take anything, just broke all our skis. What the frick car thieves, what the frick. One year on Christmas night my car was broken into. I always remove my faceplate. There were no other items in the car except a candy bar. The jerks got away with a candy bar and I had to spend the day after Christmas getting my window replaced. Sounds like they were just looking out for you. To try and keep you on your diet or something. The dumbest that's ever occurred to me wasn't in what they stole, but what they left behind. Way back in 1998 we were in the process of moving. And one day, while we were at the new place, a pair of thieves showed up in a moving truck with a logo that was plausibly that of a local moving company. Neighbors didn't blink twice, and the thieves loaded up a good percentage of our stuff, and left behind, sitting in the living room, a day planner, well filled with names, addresses, places they were stealing from, places they were taking stuff, everything needed for the cops to make the easiest bust ever. I love dumb thieves. Friendly neighborhood seek a drunk attempts to break into parked and marked police car using a metal tool of some sort. Gives up and ends up passing out on the sidewalk 2 meters from the car, tool in hand. Friend of mine was walking in a park with his dog. He had a plastic bag, printed with the name and logo of a big electronics retailer that was nearby with him. Some guy walked by him, took the bag and just legged it. He was already pursuing him for a few meters when it hit him that that bag did not contain anything else but his dog's droppings. That you legally have to collect in that park, but very few dog owners actually do. So he laughed and let that guy escape. Two years ago my 1990 Subaru Liberty wagon was stolen from a major shopping center in Melbourne. Two weeks later, the car was found in front of the Melbourne Supreme Court. They'd stolen old university textbooks worth nothing, my prescription glasses, prescription, and a children's sex education book I was given as a joke birthday present. Worst part was that the car was insured for far more than it was worth. If they trashed it they would have probably done me a favor. Oh, a message from our sponsor. What's happening? Okay, hear us out, because with Yahaha Studio, you can create your own 3D multiplayer game without any coding experience or server knowledge. You just need to be creative and able to click on things. Pick a template, choose from millions of smart assets, and make your own weird little game, you weirdo. Do you need friends? Ugh, me too. Well, good, because you can make new friends in Yahaha, and you can invite your pre-existing friends, if any at all, to join you in your game and other immersive events. If you want to become your own deity, click the link in the description or scan this QR code and start creating your dream games in Yahaha for free. A few years back we had our TV stolen. The guy who stole it was just smart enough to know that insurance will replace something like that in about a month, which they did. So 4 weeks later he comes back. We made some improvements to doors, windows, locks etc so that walking out with a 42 inches plasma wasn't going to happen again quite so easily. I'd also taken crappy old PC and a crappier, older Logitech quick cam and set it up in a window overlooking our yard with some software that just saved a pic every 3 seconds. Was supposed to be motion triggered but I messed up the config. Our friendly burglar spots the camera, breaks in. Unplugs the camera from the PC and shoves it under a beanbag chair, leaving the PC running. If he had have taken the computer or even damaged the HDD that was unsecured and exposed as I didn't have the case on, I would not have been able to show the pics to the police and they wouldn't have been knocking on his door at 8am the next morning. One of my roommates in college came back with a stack of DVDs. I asked where he got them and he said from this video store down the street. A few weeks later, I notice the DVDs are still around. I ask if he's gonna return them. Heck no, man. Keeping him. I signed up there so I could rent a shitload of DVDs for free, then just keep them. I explained to him that when you sign up for something like that, you have to give personal information so you can, you know, get billed. For a while Blockbuster would only bill you a few dollars for not returning most DVDs. 
thief broke into my house last year and stole the Dell Inspiron that I received in 2005. Whopping 70 GB HD. Slow as crap. And wouldn't hold a charge despite changing the battery. They didn't take the charger. It had also gotten drinks spilled on it several times. Thanks, younger relatives. I laughed. Before I was born. Someone broke into my parents house and stole, among a few other things, some dishes and the TV remote. But the TV itself nah. A friend parked in my driveway and came in to have a chat with my mother, leaving a wrapped sandwich in their car. Someone opened the car door, took a bite of the sandwich, rewrapped it, and put it back in the car. I always want to do crap like this to people who leave their cars running in public, especially the ones with babies or young kids in the back seat. But maybe leave a post-it note on their kids for it that says, I could have been taken because you're a lazy dumb fuck. I was living in France and I think we left our car unlocked. They stole the baby bag. Used nappies aren't worth a lot. They are to the connoisseur. My cousin had her car broken into once. They stole a foldable fan you can get from the arcade redemption. Broke her car window just for that. They must have been really hot. All this global warming is driving people mad I tell ya. One time. Someone robbed us. But not of anything valuable. In fact, all he stole was a small flower pot in the front garden. I bet his house looks so fabulous right now. While my situation was dumb on my part, I had purchased a car alarm, but hadn't installed it yet. The box was in my trunk and my car was broken into and my stereo was stolen and they went through my whole car. They left my car alarm in the plane open in the driver's seat. This guy had a sense of humor and he was considerate as far as thieves go. When taking my stereo he carefully set my cup of soda on the ground in front of my seat. My idiot friend stole my flash drive and then lied about it horribly. The conversation went like this. Him. Is this your flash drive? Me. Yes. OMG. I've been looking everywhere for that. Him. No. This is my flash drive. Me. What? Dude. You know that's mine. Him. No. I bought this. Me. You just asked me if it was mine. They don't even sell these. My dad gave it to me. Him. No. I've had this forever. See, this part is broken. Me, you broke my flash drive. Him, no, it's my flash drive. Then I punched him in the face and took my flash drive. We almost fought, but he backed down. Fast forward two weeks from then, he tells me about how he read a story I wrote and how much he liked it. Guess what? I only had that story on my flash drive. What a freaking idiot. Had an old Volvo that was broken into. One of the side windows smashed. Before I had time to replace it I left the car unlocked. Had a large bag of thrash in the back seat one day that I should throw away later. Left the car parked for 2 hours. Unlocked and with a window smashed. Came back and the opposite window was smashed and the trash bag stolen. My car has been broken into twice. The first time they just stole change. Probably about $5 worth. The second time, however, the thieves took my French textbook and notebook for class. While college textbooks are typically pricey and a good steal, this one in particular was half covered in battery acid, long story, and the pages were literally disintegrating. The book was worthless. A few years back, my mom used to a lot of country walks rambling sort of stuff so she bought a two-part gps tracker it meant that she took one half with her could use it as a sort of map not a very good one but also if she got lost or didn't come back my dad could turn his on and find her the house got broken into a while back and amongst other things my ps won the bastards they took the one she carried with her it looked a bit like an old school portable tv i suppose all we had to do was turn it on and call the police Lucky too, I'd nearly completed Spiro. About a month ago, I was pulling out of my driveway when I noticed my other car's hood was popped. I stopped, got out and closed it. Walking back to my car I looked again and my driver door was cracked open. Sat inside, center console open, glove compartment on the floor, nothing missing. Lock and shut the door, noticed my gas tank lid was open. Son of a bee stole my gas. Oh wait, it's been 0 miles to E for 2 weeks. Win. TL. DR. Gas thieves can't find gas lid release lever. 
get nothing from the already empty tank. Someone prized the lock off my car door to steal the contents of the ashtray, which my late night McDonald's venture had left at a whopping 68p. That's maybe $1 at a push. There was a £2 coin in the football and it cost me £200 in repairs. Those stupid bastards. Someone broke into my locker and stole a pair of Danxo clogs. There were 6 pairs of the exact same shoes out in the open. Maybe they weren't his size. I had a thief practically turn himself in at my friend's doorstep seconds after robbing my car in the driveway. I was at a friend's house for a party and I left my car door unlocked which I very rarely do. I was parked at the end of the driveway near the road. Later in the night, when we were all pretty drunk and happy, we hear a knock on the door and go to see who it is. It was someone none of us knew, and he opened with, is that your car when we told him yes, that it was mine. He just said, Steve Wissonant was here, and walks away. We were kind of stunned and it took a second to realize something was fishy, but after he had left I went to check my car and surely enough someone had broken in and stole my GPS. We called the cops who came and got some info then drove around to check the nearby area. She found the guy who had knocked on my friend's door and he had the GPS on him. If the guy had just stolen it and walked off, no one would have noticed until the next day when I started my drive home. He'd have gotten away cleanly. No one was outside at the time. I have no clue why the guy felt it was necessary to try to throw us off a trail we didn't know existed by making up another person. But to this day we curse the name of Steve Wissonant when things go awry. Similar situation. They stole my worthless faceplate and my fiance's fake flower necklace. They left behind all the loose change. The $300 stroller. $150 car seat. All my CDS. And my $500 golf clubs. I laughed hysterically. We're pretty sure it was kids teenagers. At first my husband couldn't believe it. He thought I'd taken it out because I didn't want to listen to his music. He just kept saying there's no way someone took just that. My briefcase was stolen from under my chair in a pub in London once when I went to the toilet. None of my friends saw what happened. It was a nice briefcase. Italian leather. Fairly new. I didn't have much in it. Some papers, a stack of my business cards, a free USB stick from some trade show, an old mobile due for an upgrade, a Mont Blanc pen and a solid silver keyring. I was pretty upset because the keyring was completely irreplaceable and the pen was a gift, not to mention the significant monetary value of each. The next day I got a phone call from a nearby theater. They'd found a briefcase by the stage door and it had a few of my cards in it. Yay. I went down to pick it up. Brought some wine for the lovies who'd found it, a mistake. In retrospect, it was the tech crew and they'd have preferred cider. And I opened it up. Inside was my priceless keyring, the pen and all my papers. The thieves had only taken the empty 500 megabytes USB stick and a beating up old Nokia. Dumb thieves? Maybe, but I guess the Nokia was easy to fence. The stuff that was actually worth something was probably much harder to sell. As a nice postscript. A couple of years later I was walking home from the station after another night out with the briefcase in one hand and my wife in the other. A gang of thugs, five of them, tried to grab the bag. Being mightily pee off about something or other that day I decided to confront the bastards rather than run or hand over the case. The only place to run to was through an empty park, and that seemed like a good way to get knifed. They weren't expecting this and immediately backed off, which only emboldened us further between my wife's angry yelling, she's really loud, and has no fear, and my thick-headed ability to absorb punishment from one of the thugs whipping me with his belt. Like Austin Powers I actually laughed at him, saying, you fight like a girl. We bought enough time for the neighbors to wake up and come out waving rolling pins. The suckers ran off and we went home so I could be patched up by my beautiful woman in time-honored action hero fashion. The next morning I saw one of the thugs on the train. Smiled at him and waved as he jumped off and ran away at the next station. I'm a bit scared of the briefcase to be honest. I don't know if it's jinxed or lucky. I use it once a week or so. But I won't take it on a plane. My brother went to Thomas Jefferson High in Northern Virginia. He told me stories of how people would go through your wallet and only take one dollar or two to get a drink and then leave the rest there in the wallet. Good guy thieves. Only take what they need. My little brother had a party while I was at class one night, community college course, 
7 11 pm $250 semester and full transfer of credits just makes too much financial sense. His friend went into my room and stole a bunch of jewelry, mostly stuff I inherited after my mother died. She also took some DVDs I had, but those could be easily replaced. She left a nearly empty bottle of crappy cheap body spray on my bed, so I come home to find a foreign object sitting on my bed and pause. It triggers me to look around for anything else unusual, and I find the jewelry box partially open with most of the rings gone. As far as I know though, the police just returned my stuff and the girl got community service because she was 17. She died of a drug overdose some years later, and I lived with a front door knob and key lock on my bedroom door until I moved out. Someone stole our life size porcelain. Frick I can't remember what it's called. It's a bird. Large beak. Eats fish whole ad store some in a mouth pouch. When I picture it, I think flamingo. Pinguino. Porcupine. Goddamn it. Pelican. But a porcupine with wings might be the scariest thing ever. Some African males. Got caught in front of my webcam which I'll leave running when I am out. Broke into my dorm room and stole various food items from my mini fridge. Pasta. Fried chicken, some sodas, natty ice. They also stole various office supplies, stapler, staples, post-it notes, etc. They did not take my laptop, running the webcam, my monitor, speakers, or other major electronic equipment. They did steal my iPhone USB charger though and a small statue of a giraffe valued at around $8. You don't take a man's computer, he's got his pee and crap on there. It's just proper manners. In about 30 minutes someone slid the top on my car, disabled my alarm without setting it off or cutting any wires and stole my two seats of all things. Turns out brand new seats for an S2K are special handcrafted leather from Japan and cost about 10k. That's more than the engine. I hope your insurance covered your new seats. One Easter my mom's car was broken into. She used a purse that guys wouldn't recognize as a purse I guess. So they didn't grab it, but it had $500 in it. They did take her makeup bag, which was more purse-like, and emptied it out in a neighbor's driveway, and my game purse which had my Game Boy Color and its accessories in it. They threw that out as well. A friend and I were hanging out on a school playground at 3am kind of recently. We decided to see if the school was open so we went to the door, and it was. I guess when we opened the door, a silent alarm went off, alerting the cops that someone had broken in. About 3 minutes later, there were sirens going off everywhere, so we ran as fast as we could to our friend's house up the street. Of course, I was rushing, so I left my purse with my cell phone, id, social security card, credit debit cards, etc, and also my roommate's shoes. For the next 2 hours, there were cop cars going up and down the street looking for us. We drove by about 2 hours after and there were still cops roaming the schoolyard. So I thought I was screwed. We went back to my friend's house and went to sleep, and in the morning went back to see if my purse was still there. But to my surprise, the cops didn't see it, even though it was in plain view. But they did take my roommate's shoes. I don't know what they were planning on doing with them. TL. DR. Broke into a school. Cops came, ran away without purse or shoes. Cops just took shoes. My car at the time was a 10 year old minivan with almost 200,000 miles on it. Was missing a hubcap. Hadn't been washed in a year. I woke up one morning and it was missing. Just like that missing. I took a taxi to work and got a call from the company that managed my apartment complex. They had found a bunch of my stuff. Along with the back seats of the minivan. Behind the apartment complex. Someone else had had his motorcycle stolen. A few days later the police found my minivan abandoned. I am still boggled that someone stole my worthless pose car just so they could steal someone else's motorcycle. I work the graveyard shift at a hotel. The only other person who is working when I'm there is the night audit person at the front desk. One day I decide to bring in a couple decks of plastic cards. That would be nice except for the fact that they're so old, so we can play gin. These decks come in a black plastic box that has no markings on the outside. So after my shift I decide that I'll just leave them in the little area where people hang their coats and whatnot and when I come back the next day they're gone. 
I'm pretty sure whoever stole them doesn't use cards as often as I do but they decided that they just had to steal my only two plastic decks. Thieves broke into my car and stole the faceplate for my radio as well. Little did they know, I had a leather bound copy of Dante's Divine Comedy in the back. You can jack a radio from anywhere, but epic poetry like that? That's true value. Pretty sure Divine Comedy is on the internet. Happened to a friend. I live in a small rural town. Several scumbags from a town a few hours away went on a bit of a crime spree in my town one night. They broke into houses and stole a few cars to drive back to their town in. My friend lives on a property about 20 kilometers out of town on the route these crime geniuses would have driven home on. If my friend leaves a light on you can see their house from the road. So presumably these douche nozzles saw a light on and went to see what they could steal. They found an old Toyota Hilux Ute with a horse float attached and thought it would make a nifty getaway vehicle. For those not familiar with old Toyota Hiluxes, they accelerate at approximately half the speed of smell to steal a phrase, and have a top speed similar to that of a dead cat, and that's without a ton or so of horse float attached to the back. The next morning the ute was found about 2 kilometers down the road. No damage and nothing stolen. Morons. My friend went to the local Chinese restaurant and ordered Chinese takeaway. He was walking home with the food and some guy came past on a BMX and grabbed the food out his hand and rode off. My friend said he was somewhere between shock and bemusement so it didn't really register to chase after the guy. All he was left with was a piece of plastic from the handle of the bag. When I was younger, someone broke into my dad's car. That criminal mastermind got away with a broken cell phone and less than a dollar's worth of spare change. He completely ignored a brand new laptop, Game Boy, and many CDs that were laying about the unlocked vehicle. I lived in a not so good neighborhood when I was younger. We ended up getting broken into when our dog wasn't home and nobody was there. They ended up taking my not so glamorous Pokemon card collection, the old fat Game Boy, and some cheapo jewelry that my mom had next to her bed, completely ignoring the brand new snowboard, TV, and console games, all lying about in the living room. The window they broke cost more to replace than all of the things they stole similar thing except even shitier intelligence. I have a 1978 Lancia Monte Carlo. One of the previous owners upgraded the tape cassette player to one of those fancy, modern ones from OHH, probably 1982. About 5 years ago some dumb fuck smashed a window, took the stereo, ripped open the board between the seats and the trunk looking for good stuff to steal, found nothing and then made off. Two fails here. 1. This stereo was broken. 2. It's a rear-engined car. The trunk is in the front dickwood. You missed a crap ton of tools. Some random things of reasonable value I was storing in there and a top-end 200 pounds car cover. I imagine the dealer beat the frick out of whoever tried to trade him a broken, 30-year-old outmoded stereo. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.